welcome back friends we are still in chapter 1 in this part of the first chapter i want to talk to you about the marketing process and let's briefly cover the marketing process because i do not want to spoil the uh you know it's uh, i want to actually lay down the foundations for the upcoming chapters okay let's uh, review a little bit marketing is a process by which companies create value for customers and build strong customer relationships to capture value from customers in return they build values for customers they build strong relationship with customers and you capture values for customers in return for example walmart which has become the world's largest retailer and the world's largest company just by delivering on its promise save money live better okay disney we have all heard about disney theme parks imagineers these are the people who work wonders in their quest to make dream come true today so you know whatever the byline of the company is if they work hard towards achieving their byline we can safely say that the company has successfully created a value for the customer okay apple so it says think different with dazzling customer driven innovation that captures customer imaginations and loyalty it's widely successful ipod or even ipad grabs more than 70% of the music player market its itunes music store captures nearly 90% of the song download business that's amazing okay and think of um, your local companies around you that are successfully giving the same kind of values these international uh successful businesses like walmart disney apple if do you have any local company that is doing the same think about them and think about the value they are producing for the community okay the marketing process is understand the marketing process and customer needs and wants okay this is a simple model of the marketing process design a customer driven marketing strategy first understand the marketplace and customer needs then design a customer driven marketing strategy construct an integrated marketing program that delivers superior value then build profitable relationships and create customer delight i'm going to highlight the word delight here because that's exactly what you're trying to strive with your product and service create value for customers and build customer relationships okay so and then capture value from customers in return capture value from customers to create profits and customer equity this is in essence the marketing process and this entire course is going to spend the time teaching you these steps in the marketing process okay so basically you understand the consumer then you create the product for the consumer you ask the consumer if they're happy if they're not happy you change the product according to the way they want if they are happy you further reward the customer for being happy believe me that's how it works and then this is how you create a value for your brand and a value for the customer each time they use your product or service in their daily lives okay understanding the marketplace and customer needs customer needs wants and demands remember we discussed that in the early part of the chapter needs wants and demands needs are states of deprivation okay physical food clothing warmth safety i was trying to explain to you uh the maslow's hierarchy of needs now this gets into a little bit more detail social belonging and affection these are all needs individual knowledge and self expression wants is the form that needs take as they are shaped by culture and individual personality these are the wants demands wants backed by buying power we discussed all of these with examples and this is a little bit more detail now understanding the marketplace and customer needs okay market offerings products services and experiences 
So if you offer something that fulfills a need, you need to be, just like I mentioned in the beginning of the chapter one, that if you're offering a product or a service, you first need to identify what is it providing to the customer. Is it a need, a want, or a demand? Market offerings are some combination of products, services, information, or experiences offered to a market to satisfy its needs or wants. Marketing myopia is focusing only on the existing wants and losing sight of underlying consumer needs. This is uh, usually a problem with the business. Sometimes, you know, when you identify the problems why business is not uh, doing so well, it's usually due to marketing myopia, okay? And uh, losing sight of underlying consumer needs. That's what leads to failure of a product. We're going to talk about case studies and instances of marketing myopia to shed some light into this concept in the future. Okay, understanding the marketplace and customer needs, customer value and satisfaction. Marketers set the right level of expectations, not too high or low, and customers value and satisfaction. So you need to keep this value and satisfaction balance uh, somewhat straight. Okay, think about this. Uh, why do marketers not always understand customers' needs? How can they better identify customer needs? Marketers often work in a vacuum and they do not consider the customer's needs as much as they should. Future chapters in this course will talk about market research and marketing information and uh, important tools for understanding customers' needs. Students might be familiar with survey research or focus groups, okay, as techniques. So you must be thinking that, you know, I've been talking to you about focus groups and I've been talking to you about surveys. So people do surveys and focus groups to understand what we, the customer really wants, okay. You must be familiar with survey research or, you know, again, focus groups for gathering information or you must be asked for their, you know, for example, you when you are purchasing something, they might ask you for your area code, where you live, just to try to understand, you know, where the people are coming from. Or sometimes when you make a purchase at checkout, they say, give us your email address, we'll give you more offers and, you know, special offers and sale, uh, you know, uh, notices. And then sometimes they also take your mobile numbers and cell phone numbers just to um, you know analyze the consumer base so many many strategies like these they help marketers not perform in a vacuum and help them design better marketing solutions for the dynamic market out there up next we have understanding the marketplace understanding the marketplace and customer needs Exchange and relationships. Exchange is the act of obtaining a desired object from someone by offering something in return. Marketers aim at building strong relationships by consistently delivering superior customer value. Marketing consists of actions taken to build and maintain desirable exchange relationships with target audiences involving a product, service, idea, or other object. Beyond simply attracting new customers and creating transactions, the goal is to retain the customer and grow their business with the company. So exchanges and relationships are carried out to build a strong customer base. We will learn more about this in detail in upcoming chapters. Okay, a few more things important in the marketing um, process. Understanding the marketplace and customer needs. A market is the set of actual and potential buyers of product. Okay, actual and potential. Please try to understand. Actual buyers and people who are not yet your buyers. Okay, but they are potential buyers. Why? Because they also fall under the target market. So each party in the system, these are the suppliers and you have the consumers, you have company, you have competitors and marketing intermediaries. Marketing intermediaries are uh, people that come in between the companies and the 
consumers. Each party in the system adds value to a retailer like Giant. Okay, this is a local company here in UAE, Giant. It's like um, a supermarket, a hypermarket. Cannot fulfill its promise of low prices unless its suppliers provide low costs. So it has to make sure that it teams up with suppliers that are already providing services at lower costs. A car maker like Mercedes cannot deliver high quality car to car buyers unless its dealers provide outstanding service. So you need to be able to understand, for example, if you go to a Mercedes dealership store, I mean, the kind of treatment you get in that store is completely different from the kind of experience you have at a Mazda dealership store. So, you know, this it's, it's an experience that they create, uh, leading you to believe that you're really, really, really buying something uh, of a very high quality. Okay, up next we have designing a customer-driven marketing strategy. Marketing management is the art and science of choosing target markets and building profitable relationships with them. What customers will we serve? That's the target market. And how can we best serve these customers? What is our value proposition? I keep talking about value proposition. I keep stressing on this word here. And I need you to think about value that you're providing to the community uh, that will be remembered and that will be the source of your brand loyalty. So th these are the questions that you answer in marketing management. The company must, whatever company that you have decided to launch, it must decide who it will serve by dividing the market into segments. And by trying to serve all customers, marketers may not serve any customer well. So you should focus on a particular age group, particular gender, particular class, and then try to market accordingly. Then designing a customer-driven marketing strategy is select a customer to serve. Okay. Are you targeting customers? Are you targeting unmarried single people? What is your target group? Okay. Are you targeting families or is it singles? Make up your mind. Market segmentations, where my segmentation refers to dividing the market into segments of customers. Target marketing refers to which segment to go after. Demarketing is marketing to reduce demand temporarily or permanently. The aim is not to destroy the demand but to reduce or shift it. We're going to explore more of these later. Designing a customer driven marketing strategy, choosing a value proposition. So, the value proposition is a set of benefits or values a company promises to deliver to customers to satisfy the needs. For example, the car. Land Rover, it proposes a value that says go beyond uh, to get a taste of adventure, whatever your taste. Okay, so choosing a value proposition is, it means that VP is the set of benefits or values it promises to deliver to consumers to satisfy their needs. BMW is the ultimate driving machine. Land Rover, go beyond. Such value propositions differentiate one brand from another, okay? From an ultimate driving experience to an adventure experience. These are two different experiences. So when you think of driving experience, you think BMW. When you think of mountains and valleys and, you know, uh, smell of the forest and all of these, you think of Land Rover. So this is how they want you to associate their brands with, okay? And then why should I buy your brand rather than your competitor should be the question uh, that you should be able to answer okay designing a customer driven marketing strategy these are all the topics that we are touching right now and in the future we are going to elaborate them designing a customer driven marketing strategy marketing management orientation production concept product concept selling concept marketing concept and society concept we just covered that okay production concept we talked about it is the idea that consumers will favor products that are available and highly affordable. Companies will focus on improving production and distribution. Product concept we talked about is that the idea that consumers will favor products that offer the most quality performance features and an organization should therefore devote its energy to making continuous in product improvements. 
Selling concept is the idea that consumers will not buy enough of the firm's products unless it is, undertakes a large scale selling and promotion effort. Okay, now the push buying and push selling that we talked about. Marketing concept is the idea that achieving organizational goals depends on knowing the needs and wants of the target market and delivering the desired satisfactions better than the competitors. In this one, we talk about the selling and marketing concepts. So this is selling concept and marketing concept. Starting point is factory. Your starting point is the market itself. Focus existing products. Focus customer needs. Means selling and promoting integrated marketing. Profits through sales volume. Profits through customer satisfaction. We're going to discuss this whole thing in the form of a case study and examples in the future. Societal marketing concept is the idea that a company's marketing decisions should consider consumers' wants, the company's requirements, consumers' long-term interests, and society's long-term interests. So this is how we explain again the societal marketing is consumers' wants and satisfaction, companies' profits, and human welfare or uh, community benefits or environmental benefits. Digital age, okay, major developments, digital age, rapid globalization, ethics, and social responsibility, not for profit marketing. All right, with this, I am going to end my chapter one, and up next, we're going to talk about chapter two. So, stay tuned. Mm -hmm.